Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. It's a stunning day in March and I thought I'd give a bit of a garden tour to show how it's looking at this time of year and to use as a reference as the garden starts to now rapidly change over the coming months. We're gonna begin at where most of the garden starts, on these shelves here. We've got lots of onions, all kinds of peas, beetroot, shallots, broad beans, and then underneath me here, I've got amaranth, caraway, and then all along this side, there's also a lot of other seedlings coming through. So from what I can see here, there's coriander, Swiss chard, spinach, all kinds of broad beans, more peas, uh, broccoli, calendula, dill, all sorts of things are coming through. And it's really exciting because it's getting that bit closer to seeing parts of the garden beginning to slowly and gradually fill up with new plants for the season. The first of the new crops to pop up was obviously garlic. I've got two different varieties here, Germiado and Primer. Now the Primer is looking a little unhealthy, and I'm not really sure why, but it's still putting on all of this fresh green growth, and I'm gonna be optimistic with how it's going. And again, you can see more Germiado, and this is, this is perfectly healthy enough. And very soon we've got two garlic patches here in the garden. And I reckon within a month, we're gonna start harvesting the green garlic, which is gonna be really nice where we can actually use basically the stem of the garlic in a lot of cooking. And it is such a wonderful ingredient. Then to my right, we've actually got a lot of elephant garlic starting to come up. It's something I've wanted to grow for many, many years. And I always forgot about it. And then finally, uh, I remembered about it at the right time of year. And you can see these beautiful eruptions of elephant garlic coming through. And I'm really curious to see how big these actually get, because apparently they can get pretty massive. I love this little part of the garden because there's so much greenery and vibrance. We've got actually, <laughs> as well, a lot of purple. This is red Russian kale coming through. And this kale here is hungry gap kale. So apparently it takes a lot longer for it to run to seed. And it's also remarkably hardy. And it's a really tasty plant. It's quite compact as well, what I found. So if you have quite an exposed area, it's a fantastic kale variety to grow. Then, this kind of fennel that's growing, you can use the fronds in cooking and it tastes so nice. It's actually coming up from what happens when I'm clearing a bed and I cut the stem to leave the plant roots in. Sometimes the plant roots will grow back and I think it's, it's so nice to have this fennel coming through. Might run to seed, which would be lovely because fennel flowers are, are really beautiful and delicate. And it's really tall, it has a lot of structure. Um, like last year, we let some of the fennel grow and it was such a stunning sight. So to have this fresh fennel flavor and see these growing through is, is really welcoming. And then, honestly, probably the most exciting thing about the garden right now for me is looking at these purple sprouting broccoli. We've got, when you look inside, all of these heads that are developing and every time I come back to the garden they're getting slightly bigger and slightly more purple and it's just a matter of days until this is going to be a whole forest of purple sprouting broccoli and I'm just going to do my best to try and eat it every single day for as long as possible. Here's a second patch of garlic. This again is Germiado and I'm pleased I planted that because it's all lovely and healthy and it's growing at quite a nice pace now and then this patch of kale here is starting to flower. You might have seen in a previous video where I was showing how, as it's been knocked over with all of the high winds, it's forced so many shoots upwards, flower shoots, all of which are edible. And it's amazing how productive they are. And I, I think we're gonna try and implement that in, in future planting plans, ways of actually on purpose knocking over kale stems to get that amazing flourish. So last summer, in this section, we actually let some leeks grow and flower, and we had an amazing display of leek flowers. And this year, we've 
putting in a different flower. It's not an edible flower, it's actually a poisonous flower, it's foxglove. But foxglove is such a stunning, striking plant and it adds a pop of colour. You can see all of the daffodils behind me, a true sign of spring. And we've also got crocus uh, coming through, which was very recently planted back in autumn. And I, I really like this colour, but I find that the rest of the year with all of this soft fruit is very green. So by applying and growing these foxgloves, hopefully we're gonna just be able to brighten up this corner around early summertime. I'm just interested to see how it makes this corner feel because these were all growing in a raised bed. We had loads of seedlings of foxgloves last year and because they're biannual, we thought, well, let's pot them up, plant them out this year so we can hopefully enjoy their flowers. On a recent video, a lot of you showed quite a bit of interest in this plant that I'm growing here. It's Austerian tree cabbage, and it is popular for all the right reasons. Very productive, very hardy, very tasty, and a lot of you are asking, where do you get the seeds? I just wanted to give a shout out to the Real Seed Company because that's where I got these seeds, and in fact, most of the really interesting varieties that I'm gonna be growing, especially this year, have come from them. So if you're in the UK and you're looking for some really fantastic varieties to add to your garden this year, I couldn't recommend a better place. Last year, I grew ochre in these tires, and don't worry, I've, I've lined the tires. I've got so many people saying, don't grow in tires. I've lined them so it's safe. What I am actually gonna do this year though is change it up a bit. I'm gonna grow a load of flowers that are non-edible with the goal of attracting as many pollinators as possible to the garden because right here it's a beautiful sun trap. It's almost south facing and you know there's, there's some nettles that are growing there, nice and big nettles and it's showing how effective these are because all the other nettles around are really quite small. So this is always gonna be two, three degrees Celsius more warm than the rest of the garden. This top part of the garden is relatively quiet. I've replanted the strawberries, taking as many of the layers as possible and those are going elsewhere. There's a new herb bed just to your left that again is utilizing the direction of the sun. So you're gonna grow a lot of different herbs there. A lot more kind of of the perennial herbs as well. This in front of me here, this bed last year was where we grew all of the brassica seedlings. So it's a brassica seed bed. I'm actually considering doing the exact same again this year uh, based on how healthy and how great everything was. And also as a bed to start off my uh, leek seedlings because I, I use the same technique for leeks. I sow them and I create a leek seed bed, lift them up and then transplant them to their final positions later on down the line. And then just to the side of the, of the polytunnel, again, gonna be a lot more herbs, a lot more flowers. We've got these kind of, we've got um, honey berries and blueberries all starting uh, to bud and come through. Right now I've got a really strong smell of coffee because most of this bed comprises of used coffee grounds that I've been collecting from local cafes. And as you can see, it looks like nothing you'd expect to see in a garden because we're turning this into a trial bed using compost as kind of a control and then using different mulches with used coffee grounds. We're also trialing using coffee grounds in seed starting mixes because I've heard quite a few interesting things about it and then other things where it's like a big no-no. And I thought the best way to find out is to just try it out and see the results for myself. So. This is gonna be a really big part of this year in terms of that experimental side, really going all out, really creative, and just thinking, well, whatever happens, we'll know the results. Because I'm, I'm on this mission now, especially this year, to try and find as many different methods and techniques and the joining of ideas together to learn as much as possible and then share it with you guys. So we've got this new project that's been set up right now 
that's a really exciting growing project. We've got a mini garden going in. Uh, we've got nearly an acre of terracing uh, that's being built to grow a lot of different heritage varieties. But we're also going to be creating a test garden, running multiple long-term trials of all sorts of different ways of gardening and the combination of these different techniques to learn as much as possible and have the data. So hopefully I can share it with you and with other gardeners with the core goal of ways of reducing the amount of money, so saving money, and also growing the most nutrient dense food possible. So this is something that you can look forward to, but if you do want to support it, I do have a Patreon. where you will get a lot of the behind the scenes with that project as well. As time progresses, the length of the trellis running along this outside boundary has been gradually creeping and increasing. And the goal is to add as much trellising as possible further up the bank. Maybe it's a little bit too late to plant new things. For example, this is a new fig and you can see these buds just appearing. But I'm thinking, tons of climbing beans and runner beans because it is such a lovely area and it will help create a more enclosed feeling for the garden. The polycrop has been such a nice space over winter. It's been a shelter, it's been nice and warm and also we've had a lot of greenery but now things are rapidly changing. We've got potatoes being planted in buckets, we've got peas that we've just put out, however something has been nibbling those so I'm going to have to take action because I need my peas. I'm looking forward to that. And it's going to be first peas of the season in here. But yeah, it's just getting everything starting to ramp up. We've got lots of radishes growing that are looking really, really nice. And this time in a month, we're going to be starting to think about when the tomatoes are going to be coming out and also the peppers. And that is always a massive transition in the season. There's all sorts of other little things happening in the garden. We've got new beetroot leaves coming through. Uh, the swede is starting to flower. That's another crop, the flowers. We've got things that are also running to seed, such as the pak choy, which is another thing that we can eat. But really, it's a nice slow start to a new year. And one of the things that you're probably thinking about right now, especially if you're new to gardening, is what do I need to do to prepare my beds for sowing seeds or transplanting seedlings? So this video here is very much gonna help you with that.